Good evening, glad you're here. Hope you enjoyed the beautiful sunny weather this afternoon. Maybe get a chance to get outside a little bit. But a wonderful day. I don't think you're going to have that many of those uh, more this year, but so glad to enjoy it today. Glad you're here tonight. Looking forward to worshiping the Lord together. Let's go ahead. We'll start with the song. The first song, Blessed Be the Name. If those that are helping me sing can go ahead and come, that'd be perfect. So once you can, let's go ahead and stand together. The world's will be up there on the screen for you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's sing this together tonight. Sing it out together. All praise to Him who reigns above in majesty supreme, who gave His Son for man to die, that He might man redeem. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. His name above all names shall stand, exalted more and more. At God the Father's own right hand, where angel hosts adore. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. His name shall be the Counselor, the mighty Prince of Peace. Of all his kingdoms conqueror, whose reign shall never cease. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Let's pray together tonight. Father, thank you that we can be here. Thank you for your grace and thank you for your name, a name that is worthy to be praised. And Lord, as we consider you and your character tonight and everything that you are, I pray that we would worship you, Lord, with our tongues and also with our spirit. We're happy to use the message tonight. Speak to us. Challenge us. Thank you so much for what you're teaching us already today. We be, may we be stirred and encouraged in you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You can go ahead and be seated. And we're going to sing another song, I Stand Redeemed. I Stand Redeemed. We've sung this song a few times before. Might be new for a couple of you tonight, but I think everyone's heard at least once or twice, but I stand redeemed by the blood of Jesus. At the dawn of eternity, when the midst of time is gone, when the choir of heaven So 
of angels listen to a song they cannot sing. I will voice my praise to Jesus with the song of the redeemed. I stand redeemed by the blood of Jesus. The price is paid. My debt is gone. The chains that bound me no longer hold me because of Calvary. I stand redeemed. Amen. Thankful for redemption tonight. I love that song as it reminds us of that truth. And I hope it remind you of that tonight. I'm going to go over a few announcements here together and read one of our missionary letters and just keep us up to date on our missionaries. Remind, of course, all of us uh, to pray for them and the different things that are going on. But let's go ahead, run through a few announcements here together, and uh, just, of course, continue to pray about different things that are going on. Of course, there's our renewal meetings, uh, just with the desire that God will renew our hearts. And I trust God is speaking to your heart and encouraging you. And I do want you to be in prayer for that. Reminder, of course, this week, Thursday will be online only, but then Friday we are encouraging people to come back uh, for a time of prayer together. And I do really want to spend some time in prayer as a church. Maybe there's some needs in your life. But also just pray for God's work in our church and for God to speak to our hearts. Of course, we want to pray specifically as well for those outreach baskets going out we'll talk about in a moment as well. Uh, but looking forward to Friday together. And then, of course, next Sunday, we'll have Pastor Pennell with us. And looking forward to that day together as well. So please be in prayer as we look towards these things. Um, also, of course, time with the outreach basket. If you didn't get yours this morning, uh, they are downstairs. And I would encourage you to pick one of those up and to take part in reaching out to a family member, a friend, a neighbor, uh, someone that you know that you can be a good, positive impact on for the gospel. And this is a great way uh, for you to share your faith and to talk to someone else about the Lord. And so I was encouraged uh, to see all the baskets that went already this morning. And I didn't get an accurate count, but I think somewhere already around three quarters or so went out this morning. Uh, so they're going to be gone. So if you didn't get one, make sure you get one and make use of that. And of course, anything that we have left will be available next week, but I'm expecting all those to go next week. And I also want to thank everyone for writing names of different people uh, that the baskets are going out to. That's going to be a great prayer list for us together, just as we pray that God would work in people's hearts. So let's be praying about that. Um, of course, our Sunday evening series right now, I want to encourage you towards and to be faithful on Sunday nights. Uh, but looking towards how to share the gospel with others, this theme of lift up your eyes to the fields. They're white all ready to harvest. Of course, taking from what God has told us about the harvest field around us. So let's continue uh, to be faithful towards that. Also, of course, to remind us about giving. You can give in person, by mail, or by e-transfer. Give at steelcitychurch.ca. So I'm going to go ahead and read our missionary letter. After that, I'll pray for the offering as well as for our missionary but I want to update you tonight with the Bahinian Children's Home, of course, a ministry of Harvesters Baptist Church in the Philippines, and just kind of read you a little bit of some updates about the ministry for the children's home there that we support, and thankful to be able to support them and to pray for them. It starts here, food in their tummy. We thank God for his provision, and we thank you for being a channel of blessing to these children. God's grace is so sufficient where these kids depend on. The country's economy is going down because of pandemic, but we don't have enough to ration or we don't have to ration the food because God is providing it for these children. What an amazing God we have. It also says here, rainy season starts. No winter or autumn in our country, but multiple typhoons and storms enter our country every year. We are now in the rainy season of the year. Our roof gutters are very old and rusty and have a lot of patches already. We are praying to replace them with stainless roof gathers so raindrops won't fall on our hall grounds. Also, it says here, electrical transformer requirement. The electric company is requ requiring us to upgrade our electrical transformer, which costs around 10,000, to supply us with electricity sufficiently. Since our facilities are requiring more energy, the current electric supply is not enough anymore. 
Right now we are experiencing under voltage and occasional blackouts. Also it says here, clean water for everyone. After a few months, the water station has finally come to its final touch. The structure is complete, but we are still finishing the interior. The project is to purify the existing drinking water for the children. And then they've got a whole water purification system they've talked about in other letters. They've got a picture in here as well. The last heading here is school is about to start. The regular school year has been postponed because of this pandemic. In a few weeks, we'll open the school again for our children. We now have the teachers living with us because it is unsafe for the children and for them to travel to and from their houses outside our campus. The government also requires us these safety protocols to avoid getting infected by the virus. Meanwhile, the children are so excited to go back to school, though they have been studying English on their vacation. The books, uniforms, and other school materials are being prepared for the school opening. And that is the Bahinian Children's Home, Ministers of Harvesters, Baptist Church in the Philippines. Let's go ahead and pray. Ask God to work in this ministry and thank God for the offering. Father, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for providing for our needs and for taking care of us as a church. Father, thank you that you allow us to be a blessing and a help to other ministries around the world as well. And thank you for allowing us to be a help to this ministry for these children. Thank you for providing for their needs, Lord, physically, and for the different ministries that you're doing there, as Lord, as well as the work that you're working in these children's hearts. Lord, I pray that you continue to use us. I pray your blessing on them. I do thank you, Lord, for the privilege to give and ask your blessing on the offering given today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I'm going to go ahead and ask my daughter to come. She's playing an offertory tonight, and she's going to go ahead and she's going to play that, and then we'll have a song and the message. All right. Good job, Hope. How many people knew that song? All right, quite a few hands. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that was any better than you do. So, Jesus wants, no, I know the song. <laughs> Jesus wants me for his son. <laughs> uh, you know, there's moments where sometimes I realize there's things that are happening in the auditorium that people on the live stream have no idea what's happening. So, my daughter was speaking out in church, my youngest one. So, giving everyone an interpretation for that tonight. We're going to sing another song, I'd Rather Have Jesus. And I hope that's your heart tonight. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. This is one of my favorite songs. I have a lot of favorite songs. But this is one of them, a song that reminds you, of course, of where our hearts should be. But I hope it will encourage your heart tonight. Why don't we do this? Let's go ahead and stand together if you can. And we'll sing together, I'd Rather Have Jesus Than Silver or Gold. Sing it from your heart tonight. Think about the words. Allow God to speak to you. Jesus. 
Jesus, than man's applause. I'd rather be faithful to his dear cause. I'd rather have Jesus than worldwide fame. I'd rather be true to his holy name than to be ahead and be seated. So thankful to be able to have this day set aside to be spiritually encouraged in a special way. And I have a guest preacher, of course, with us, Pastor Mike Holland. It's a great blessing this morning. I was encouraged by the message. I trust you were as well. Pastor Holland, would you come tonight and give us what God has put on your heart? Thanks again so much for coming today. I really do appreciate it. It's been a blessing. Take your Bibles into Revelation chapter 3, if you would. I will also give you a little bit of a missionary update. Our church uh, runs the Canadian Gospel Project, Bearing Precious Seed Canada, the Canadian Gospel Project that this church uh, supports. And so I want to tell you about something exciting that's happening, even in all this uh, disruption and chaos. Uh, In the month of December, it's our plan, it's our goal, it's our desire to mail a, a portion of God's Word into every home in the province of Manitoba. So that's a huge goal. It's 465,000 homes uh, that will get a Bible, a portion of the Bible, from our little warehouse in St. Thomas, all right? And so we are working hard at that. We have the the finances are in place for that. Just got to get enough of the um, John and Romans produced and labeled to get sent out. So if you pray for us for that, we'd appreciate it. We have another church in the U.S. that partners with us, and they're producing as well uh, and sending them up to us. So we're getting those things packaged, ready to go. And along with that, we're doing something that we've never done before. We've always wanted to try. And we're going to do, at the same time we're mailing into homes uh, mailboxes, we're also going to put uh, an advertisement into social media through Facebook and Instagram and that. So it's going to point people uh, to the John and Romans that they're going to receive and also point them to a a website that will have a a gospel presentation for them. And uh, so we're using both the mailbox and both the social media feed to try to get the gospel into every home, to every Canadian's home, into every Canadian uh, social media feed that we could possibly do it. So uh, we're looking forward to that. In fact, uh, Brother Langfield is going to help us with that video. We know you all know that he does a great job in those things. And we do, the the word is out. He's the man. And so we've contacted him to try to help us with that. So they're going to get together and get this uh, salvation uh, video ready to go. So we're just praying that God would use that. Uh, in a great way to get the gospel out. We'll, we won't know until eternity uh, what God has done with all the portion of His Word that has gone into homes. And your church has a part in that. Every time you support uh, the ministry there, we send out Bibles. Uh, we're trying to cover every home in Canada. Like I said, over 13, around 13 million homes. We're over 8 million into the project. So we're over halfway done with the, the, the nation of Canada, which is crazy. 
And then on top of that, our next project we're working on is a, a French English uh, Romans, all right? So we're, it's because of the size of the booklet and the weight of the booklet and how it works in Canada Post. We can't do John and Romans both in French and English. So for uh, Quebec and for New Brunswick, we're going to do a, a combination French-English Book of Romans with the gospel presentation as well. So we're looking at forward to covering those provinces as well. So always moving forward. Uh, and so we appreciate your support and your... Now we need your prayer support because... Uh, we can mail to every home, but God's word has to be blessed by God Himself, and we need the God. We need God to do something great and and draw people to Himself. So we ask you to pray with us. We're praying about the first part of December, and so before Christmas, we're hoping to have every home in Can every home in Manitoba cover with the gospel. So uh, again, big undertaking for us. I'm not sure if we can do it. Well, I know we can't do it. <laughs> whether, whether God's going to be in it and get us done through before, December, before 2021, I don't know. But we're, that's our goal, to get it all covered uh, before Christmas. So pray for that with us if you would, all right? Let's have a word of prayer. We'll begin the message tonight. Heavenly Fathers, we pause now before we get into your word. We ask that you would meet with us tonight and that you would speak to us tonight. Father, we desire to hear from you, to know you, to be close to you. Many people have, have driven a, a distance to come here tonight. Many have joined us online tonight. And Lord, I pray that no matter what uh, sacrifices they've made, that they will get something from your word. That will be challenged and stirred and encouraged and renewed through our time together. Thank you for uh, this church. Thank you for these gift baskets that are going out. We ask that you would help and you would bless uh, every gift basket and these uh, booklets that are going out, the done booklet, help them to speak to hearts that we see people saved. Lord, I pray you use this uh, gift to uh, open conversations uh, for people. And Lord, I pray as uh, the gospel goes into the, the province of Manitoba, Lord, I pray that you would begin to open hearts there as well and you would begin to call people. And though there are people we know that are searching out there, we pray that you would uh, help these uh, social media advertisements and the Gospels get into their hearts and their hands and make a difference in their life. Lord, we need you so badly. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Let me just encourage you with these gift baskets. I think it's a great idea, and I think it's something that we can do uh, as a, a church, as individuals, to get the Gospel out in a very strange time, and I think it's a great idea. Uh, the Bible says this, a man's gift maketh room for him. And there's a couple ways to look at that verse. You can talk about your gifting. God uses your gift to make a space for you in his service. But I always look at this too. When you give a gift, it gives a place in people's hearts. And so you giving a gift from your church to somebody that you love and care about and are praying for can open a door of conversation to share the hope of Jesus Christ. That's the idea. Right? If we just give them sweet chocolate or sweets to, to eat, that, that's, that's a great thing. It's a kind thing. But if we give them the hope of Jesus Christ, that's life changing. That's eternity changing. And so that's the idea. That's the goal. So I'm praying for you. And, and we do similar uh, things at our church. And so you pray for us as well that this will not return void. All right. Revelation chapter 3. What goes through your mind when you hear this? What, do you, what, what, what reaction do you have when you, you're sitting in your living room one night, maybe it's 6.30, 7 o'clock at night, and you're just kind of unwinding, and you hear, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. My wife runs the other direction. If, if, like, she, just, she doesn't run to the door. She runs, hits all the lights, you know, hide behind the couch, whatever, just make sure that nobody knows uh, when someone's knocking, right? Uh, at our house, there's a window above our door, and I can see out that window to see who it is, but she, she's not tall enough to do that. So she's trying to sneak around the side of the curtain to see and not be seen, right? She wants to see them, but not know. And so she's wondering, who's knocking at my door? So why do we knock on someone's door? Why does someone come knocking at your door? Why do we do that? Because we want someone's attention. Somebody on the other side of the door wants your attention. They want to give you a message. They want to see you. They want to talk to you. They want a fellowship. There's something that they want. They want your attention. Uh, the title of the message tonight is Somebody's Knocking. Somebody's Knocking. And today we're going to look at a, a very familiar verse, but I want to look at a, the light of the scriptures around it and look at Revelation chapter 3 and a familiar verse in verse number 20. The Bible says this, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. 
Revelation chapter 3, verse 20 is in a large uh, portion of Scripture. Uh, all of chapter 2 and chapter 3 are in your Bible, maybe in red letters, because it's the, the, the voice, uh, the message of Jesus Christ. And so it's his words here, and it's a, a, a whole quote goes back into chapter 1 as well. So these are letters to different churches at the time. Uh, the, uh, the writing, and it's a message for us today as the church. So let's look here at somebody's knocking. So first of all, let's look who's knocking. We, we kind of know this. this is not This is nothing new, but let's look at what the Bible says. We don't have to guess here, but it's always important when someone knocks on your door, who's knocking? That's the most important thing. There are some people that you would like to welcome into your house, and there's some people you don't want to welcome into your house. So who's knocking is very important. In fact, if I said this today, you would respond. If I said, knock, knock, you guess right. You guys know the answer, right? Who's there? That's, that's the, the general answer. If I say, knock, knock, you want to know who's there. That's, that's how the, the joke is played out, right? So who's knocking is so important. And here, we don't have to guess or speculate because the Bible tells us so clearly who's knocking in verse 20 of chapter 3. So turn back to chapter 1 of Revelation. We're going to kind of go back a little bit. Revelation chapter 1. This takes us to the beginning of the, 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 long, the long quote of red letters in our Bible to see who's knocking. And again, I think we know this, but I want you to see the description of who's knocking. Look at Revelation chapter 1, verse number 10. John says, And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. In the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, his, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Now picture this. Uh, as you think about someone knocking at your door, and you either pull back the curtain or you open the door, and here's a man... Face shining, eyes on fire. This is who's knocking at the door in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Eyes as a flame of fire, verse 15. And his feet like unto brass, as if they burn in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. His voice thunders and it's, it's loud and, and, we, and it has authority. And here's the voice in the, the face of the man on the other side of the door. And he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. So here it talks about his countenance and the sun and, and, and the, his face and all these things. What a description here of the man behind the door, the man who's knocking at the door. Verse 17, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. If you could just see the man behind the door, John fell at his feet as dead. It's an incredible picture that we can't even picture with our mind. We can, we can kind of imagine these things a little bit. But John saw it, and he fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me and said, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And, and have the keys of hell and death. This is a man of authority. This is a man of power. It's a man of strength. It's a, it's a man whose who's, uh, face is aglow with the sunshine. This is who's knocking on the door. And we know it to be Jesus Christ. What a description, though, of Christ. Turn now to chapter 3. In verse 14, we can, he describes himself a little bit more. And of the angel of the church of Laodicea and write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. He said, I'll, I'll tell you who it is, it's the Amen, the so be it. You know, the funny thing about the word Amen, I read this on, online, of course, if it's online, it has to be true. Um, it says that the word Amen is the most recognized word word in any language. Like it, 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 if you go to a different country and you say amen, they understand what it means. It, it, is, a, it is just transliterated instead of translated. Like I know a little bit of Spanish. I know a little bit of French. I know little, enough to get around in some of those things. But amen, I can go anywhere and say amen and they understand what it means. It's, it is just a, you know, and he says, I am the amen. I am the so be it. I, I'm the beginning of the creation. I'm the creator. This is the man who's knocking at the door. 
And he said, well, I, I know that, <laughs> Pastor Mike. I, I, I get that. Like, I, I knew who was knocking the door before he even said who was knocking the door. But, but think about this. Here is the creator of the world, the man of authority, whose face is shining. Let me ask you a couple of questions. If this is Jesus Christ, and we know him to be the king of kings, why is the king knocking? What king ever knocks at a door? The king doesn't knock, the king walks in. The king is announced. Here comes, you ever see on TV, like they, they blow the trumpets, uh, maybe people are dancing in front of him, and here comes the king. The king does not knock and wait. The king steps in. The king is the authority. The king takes over the room. But here, the king of kings is knocking and waiting. Interesting. We know him to be the Lord of Lords, the master. Why is the master knocking? I'm the master of my house. I never knock on my door. <laughs> Do you ever knock on your own door? I mean, I guess if you lost your keys or something, maybe you have to knock on the door or, or break a window, I guess. But I, 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 we have a keypad at ours, so I, there's, I, I'm getting in the house. I don't knock on the door and ask, let my wife sneak behind the curtain, check it out, make sure it's me, and then open the door. Like, I'm the master. I own the house. And if I'm the master, why would I knock? Now, if I go to Pastor Eagle's house, I'm knocking on the door. If I just decide, hey, I'm going to walk into Pastor Eagle's house, that probably would not be a good thing. We have some people that have become familiar uh, with us, especially our girls when they were growing up. We had some of their friends that came over enough, and they got familiar enough where they would walk in unannounced. So we had to be careful about that. <laughs> we had to be careful because that's my domain. I'm the king of the castle. I'm the master of the house. And here's someone walking to my door. My grandmother used to come over uh, back when I was a kid. And this is her, she would just walk in and this is her symbol. She would jingle her keys. And she did that because my dad was a, a, in the construction business and sometimes he'd come home dirty and change clothes before he got uh, up to, upstairs. And so she wanted to make sure that she wasn't barging in on something and she would jingle her keys. But... The master of the house does not knock. The king of kings should not knock. But yet, here we see Jesus Christ knocking. Jesus Christ has every right to enter your life, but yet he stands and knocks. Is that interesting to you? I find it interesting. As I really think, as I read this picture of this voice and, and the voice of waters and the faces of the sun and, and uh, all this authority, and he has in his hands the, the keys to death and hell. He can go, he can march into hell and go in and out if he wants to, but he stands at your door and knocks. Isn't that crazy? That's Jesus Christ. Look who's knocking. It's the King of Kings and Lord of Lords waiting at your door for your response. So look who's knocking is the first thing. I want you to see this too. Listen to his message. Look at Revelation chapter 3, verse 20 again. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear me knock, it doesn't say that. If any man hear my voice. So not only is he knocking, he's calling, right? You see that? So he's knocking and he's saying something. There, there's, a, there's a knock and a voice. If anyone hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him. So think about this. Jesus Christ can come into your life, can take over your life, has every right. He's the creator. He's the redeemer. He's conquered death and hell. Every right and authority to your life. He's now waiting at your door and he's knocking and now he's saying something. What is he saying? What is his message to you tonight? Do you ever think about that? If you, if you, and if you hear his message and open the door, he'll come in, the Bible says. So what's the message that he's saying? What, what is he giving to us from the other side of the door as he waits, trying to get our attention? So I think we find the answer right here in Revelation chapter 3. We can see what, what the message is to this church. So look back up to verse number 15. Here's the message. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of thy mouth. My mouth. Can I, can I just stop there? These are the verses that God used in my heart at, at age 17 to cause me to surrender my life to the Lord 
which eventually led to a sermon in my life to preach, which eventually led me to Canada to do whatever I can do for him. It was these verses <laughs> in a hotel room in Greenville, Ohio, not in a, mess, not in a preaching time. Here, here's my story. We were out at, on like our help program, out doing some a va- vacation Bible school and different things like that. And I came back after a long day and I was tired and I was going to lay down and relax a little bit. And one of the guys in my room said, hey, let's pray a little bit. I'll be honest with you, I didn't want to pray. <laughs> I wanted to go lay down. But you can't say that. You can't say, no thanks, I think I'll lay down. Like, you can't say that. So I said, okay, let's pray. And as I bowed my knees in prayer, I don't know what it was said or how it worked out or why God brought it, but at that moment, God got my attention. And I thought, I am in a Christian school, in a, in a good home, doing okay, but I'm neither cold nor hot, just lukewarm. And I need to change that. And God broke my heart that night and changed the course of my life through these verses. So they're very important to me. And, you know, cold water, I love cold water. <laughs> very useful. Hot water, very useful. Lukewarm water, not, not as much. And that's what God's saying. I would that you were useful to me. You're, you're neither cold nor hot. You're just lukewarm. That's the message he has for the church here and the message he has for us. Verse Number 17, because thou sayest, why, why are we lukewarm? Well, what's the problem? Why are we cold, neither cold nor hot? Because you're saying, I am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. He said, look at yourself. He said, you're, you're self-deceived. You think everything's okay and, and you're going along in life and you have all that you need and you're increased with goods and, and you know, you're pretty comfortable, but I see you differently. You're poor and wretched and naked and blind. I wish you could see you like I see you. And that night as a 17-year-old boy, I felt like I saw me like God saw me. And I was upset by it. It didn't sit well. I thought, oh God, forgive me. Forgive me for being lukewarm. Forgive me for not giving you everything. Because here is my, here's my pattern up to this point. I would hear preaching in, in Christian school. I'd hear preaching in church, and I'd come forward, and I'd pray, and I'd say, God, I want to give my life to you and surrender my life to you. Just don't call me to preach. <laughs> this is funny. Don't call me to preach, and don't make me leave singing. That was my two things. <laughs> I can't sing. And so those are the two things I, I kept holding back and saying, I, I don't want to do those things. I, any, you know, anything else is pretty much on the table, God, but, but those two things, you know what? And God bro- broke my heart. I was not surrendered because I wasn't willing to do anything. And even that night when I prayed, I thought, Lord, I'm sure you don't want me to preach or leave singing, but I guess if you did, I will. We are self-deceived thinking everything's okay. And here, Christ is trying to uh, awaken our attention and saying, look at yourself. See you the way I see you. Look at verse number 18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint uh, thine eyes with the eyes set that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Here's the message as he knocks at your door. Be zealous. Be fire, get fired up. We talked about this morning, get stirred up. You know, we need to get fired up for the things of God and get fi- and passionate about our relationship with Jesus Christ. And he's on the other side of the door and say, you're not zealous. You're, you're not passionate. You're not on fire. You're, you're not growing. You're not moving forward. And I'm here to tell you, I'm just trying to get your attention. I wish you could see you the way I see you. Look at your life. Let me have a shot. Let me have your attention. I'm knocking and I'm calling. Be zealous. Therefore, and he ends it this way, repent. Wow, what a message from the the other side of the door. (laughs) Christ is crying out for your attention. Those of you who are parents understand this. If you have more than one child, sometimes... The, all of them are screaming for your attention at one time. It's very difficult. Uh, like I said, I worked with teenagers for a lot of years. And there was times at activities and at uh, you know, gym nights and stuff where several groups needed my attention at one time. It's difficult. And Christ is saying, I mean, 
right now, work's got your attention, and politics has your attention, and maybe sports has your attention, and family has your attention, and Christ is saying, hey, what about me? What about me? I ought to be the, the, the central part of your attention. Give me, he's calling for your attention, and he's also calling for a decision. He's saying, open the door. Make a move. I'm here. He's calling for attention. He's calling for decision. He's saying, repent. There's another, <laughs> I'm talking about words that start with R-E. Repent is a good one. That night in the hotel in Greenville, Ohio, 17-year-old, I repent and said, God, forgive me for being so lukewarm. Would you please take my life and use it if you could? I, I didn't know what he had in store for me that night. And by, by many people's standards, my life has not been, like, amazing. But from my perspective, if I get to serve the Lord, and I get to try to glorify Him and please Him, that's an amazing life. And if He promises that if I just surrender to Him, He'll take care of all my needs. Oh, well, financially, like, if you looked at my bank accounts, you'd say, well, that's not, he's not very successful. He hasn't done very well for himself. That's not the scorecard. The scorecard is held by Jesus Christ. Does he have your attention tonight? Are you listening to his voice? That's the question. Listen to his message. Look who's knocking. Is Jesus Christ, King of Kings, knocking, waiting for you to open the door. Listen to his message. It's a message of, of, of passion. It's a message of repentance. And lastly, I want you to learn his desire. Look at that verse again, chapter 3, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and he will serve me. I didn't say that. I'll come into him and he'll bow down and worship me. It doesn't say that. I'll come into him, and he'll obey me. I'll finally be the master of his house, and I'll probably be the master of his life, and I'll be the king of kings and lord of lords, and he'll obey and serve and worship me. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. You know what? He has angels that do that. You know the angels worship and obey and serve God continually all the time, thousands of them? What does he want from you? What is, why is he knocking at the door? What does he want from the church? What does he want from those who claim to know Jesus Christ as Savior? Yes, it's great to serve God. Yes, it's great to obey God. Yes, it's great to worship God. That's not, what he's, that's not the message here, though, right, is it? Listen to his desire here. He said, I want to come in to him and sup with him and he with me. His desire is to come in and sup <laughs> with us. Now, when I grew up in Cleveland, the word sup meant something different. Like, what's up? <laughs> like, sup, all right? That, that's from the, the hood, all right? And uh, so, sup means to have supper, to eat together, to fellowship together. Today, we had lunch with the Eagles. We had a great time of fellowship. I enjoy them. <laughs> and we know that most church activities, and we say, we're having a church fellowship. What does that mean? Food. food. <laughs> Have you ever been to a church fellowship that didn't involve food? I don't, like, why? <laughs> like, why would you want to do that? <laughs> like, ch- fellowship and food go hand in hand. Meal time, a time, and, and, and Christ is saying here, all I want to do is come in and spend some time with you. I want a fellowship with you. I want a relationship with you. Yes, this relationship will lead to you serving him and will lead to you obeying him and will lead to you worshiping him. Yeah, those are all good, but the relationship is the key. And if we just start out saying, you know, I'm going to serve and obey and worship God, but don't have this deep-seated, passionate relationship with Christ, we're missing out because that's not what Christ is looking for. In this passage, we see as he knocks at the door, he is looking to come in and sup fellowship and relationship. Wow, what an opportunity that the King of Kings, who has every right to your life, stands at your door, knocking and calling, hey, just take a look at yourself. You're missing out. 
I'm here, and all I want is some time with you. If I could just sit down and fellowship with you, and you with me. It's a two-way relationship. He said, I want to love on you so that you can love on me. We loved him because he first loved us. So everything that we do, everything that, all of our service, all of our obedience, all of our worship stems from relationship. And sometimes in a, in a North American church, we get that out of order. It's all about checking boxes and making sure that you're there and, and doing all these things. And, and we lose the relationship aspect of it. And I wonder if this message that's written to a church in Laodicea 2,000 years ago doesn't apply to Steel City Baptist Church today. And saying, hey, you're doing all the right things. You're, you're giving out gift, gift baskets and you're, and you're serving and you're singing here and, and you're worshiping and you're coming to church on a Sunday night when many stayed home or many didn't turn on online. And, and you're, you, you've done all these things and that's great, but you're missing out on the relationship. And that's what I really want. I really want your relationship. The amazing thing to me is that Christ, the King of Kings, longs for my fellowship. Especially when I understand who He is. And who I am. Why does he want to spend time with me? Can you imagine being Zacchaeus, <laughs> the wee little man up in the tree, and Jesus Christ comes by and says, Zacchaeus, come down. I'm going to your house today. What did they do at Zacchaeus' house? I think they, they supped. <laughs> they, they hung out together. And Zacchaeus was never the same. Amen. Never the same. Jesus Christ stands at the door and knocks. And that this, this, mess, this verse is always applied to those who don't know Christ as their Savior. And I think it's a great application. And maybe today you're, you're watching or you're here, and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Maybe you've considered that, you thought about it, you don't know, is there really God? Is Jesus Christ real? And I'd say today that Jesus Christ changed my life. As an 11-year-old boy, I, I met Jesus Christ. I, I heard his voice, and he called to me about salvation. I accepted him for salvation, and it changed my life. And I, I'd encourage you to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. But this verse also has application to us, those of us who already know Christ as our Savior. Because that is just the beginning. And the relationship ought to grow. And sometimes we get busy doing things for God and we don't spend time with God or with Jesus Christ. And so he stands at the door and knocks. And it says here, if any man hear my voice. It's a personal decision. So in this room, any one of you could accept the invitation. In this family, any one of you can accept. It's not a family decision. It's not a church decision. It's a personal decision. To say, I want to passionately pursue a relationship with Jesus Christ. I don't want to just go through the motions. I don't want to just read through a checklist and say, read my Bible, had my prayer time, read my Bible, had my prayer time, checklist, checklist, checklist. I don't want a checklist Christianity. I want a passionate relationship with Christ. Amen. We're talking about renewal. And in this time, this is not a great time to, to look at our relationship and have a renewed, fresh relationship, passion for Jesus Christ as he stands at the door and knock. Let me close this with this thought. And I really want to hope you understand this and get this. Several times in the New Testament, we see the idea of knocking. Okay? Here in Revelation is Christ. Christ is dealing with a backslidden church or a church is not fellowshipping with him, a backslidden believer. It's the only time we see Christ doing the knocking in the New Testament. In the other passages, we're told to do the knocking. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. What's the rest part? Knock and shall be open unto you. We're to do the knocking. We're the ones, we are to be the ones that are hungry for relationship with Christ so that we're knocking. Hey, can we fellowship a little bit? Hey, Christ, I'm here. I'm coming to your throne. I'm going to come boldly to your throne again because I need grace and mercy to help in time of need. I'm here again. It's Mike. I'm here again. Oh, oh, I'm coming again. And I'm coming again. And I'm coming again because I want to be with you. I want to be the one doing the knocking. Unfortunately, we get distracted. We get busy, and Christ sometimes gets outside of our life, and he's the one that's knocking. 
You see, so here's the point. Here's a question I want to leave you with. In your life right now, who's doing the knocking? <laughs> is it Christ outside, you know, and you're just kind of going through the motion, and Christ is saying, you forgot something. You're doing all the right things, but you missed out on a relationship. Is Christ knocking in your life, or is it you on the other side saying, no, I'm knocking, I'm, I'm coming, I'm passionate, I want this relationship. I, I want a prayer life that is more than just praying to a prayer list. I want a prayer life that is built on relationship. And my relationship is stagnant. My relationship is not growing. My relationship is not passionate. And this is where I, I want to have that relationship. I want to be the one doing the knocking. And you're, somebody's knocking today in your life. Is Christ knocking to get your attention, or are you knocking to get His? That's the question. Because today somebody's knocking. So this week, I'd encourage you, why don't you be the one knocking? Why don't you take a time to renew a relationship with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the master of your life who is never forces himself on anybody, but he offers himself for everybody. That's your Savior. And he stands at the door and knocks. But he also says to us, you should be the one doing the knocking. So let me challenge you. Enjoy his fellowship. Listen to his voice. Let him be uh, the focus of your attention and renew a relationship with Christ by continuously knocking on his door. Would you bow your head and close your eyes? Would you just take a moment to think about this? And answer this question honestly in your heart. Who's knocking in your life? Are you passionately pursuing the attention and fellowship of Jesus Christ? Or has that gone cold and stagnant and maybe just lukewarm? So is it now he who is knocking at your door saying, if you open the door, <laughs> I'm still ready to fellowship. Oh, if you just open the door, it'll be so sweet. If you just open the door, I will come in and sup with you and you with me. Somebody's knocking. Would you this week renew your relationship with the King of Kings and look for that sweet fellowship with Him? Would you tonight, with your heads bowed and eyes closed, personalize that in your life? And how many would say, Pastor Mike, I'll tell you the truth, I want that. I, I'm not saying that you're, you may not be saying by raising your hand that, you know, well, I'm, I'm so lukewarm. Yeah, that's me. You got it. No, I'm not saying that, but you're saying this week I have been challenged. I have been encouraged by the preaching of God's word to pursue, to passionately pursue the sweet fellowship with the King of Kings because he wants my fellowship. And I, this week, want to knock on his door before he knocks on mine. And you say today, I've been challenged for this week to go knocking at the door of heaven. Would you raise your hand and say, that's me? I've been challenged. I'll take that challenge. I want to pursue a relationship with him. Oh, would to God that we as his people would be zealous, passionate, and repent and see ourselves the way he sees us. What a Savior who has every right to barge into your life and take control, but he waits for you to just open the door. Heavenly Father, as we come to you, we're so thankful for the truth of your word. And Father, I pray that you would change and renew and refresh our relationship with you. Help us to put aside distractions and, and all the craziness of this world and be able to slip into the throne room of eternity. And as we come boldly to your throne, would you give us the grace that we need? in our own lives, and the grace we need to be, make a difference in others' lives, and the mercy we need, and the help we need in time of need. Oh, God, we pray that you will uh, help us to passionately pursue this relationship with you. In your name we pray. Amen.